So thank you for joining us in the first episode of the Healing Hour for January 2019. Tonight's topic is going to be the Chinese medicine system of detox. And we are so, so excited to have you join us at the beginning of 2019. On top of that, we have a very special event tonight because we are bringing to you for the first time all of our doctors and practitioners together. So we have on with us Dr. Mao, Dr. Dao. Then we have on Albert Vaca, who's the head of our uh, Pasadena Clinic. We also have on Matthew Brand, who's the head of our Newport Beach Clinic. And then later on, we will have joining us Suan Park, as well as Frank Lam, who are practitioners at our Santa Monica Clinic, and you all are very familiar with them as well from past episodes. So we are just thrilled to have you with us tonight. Um, just to explain to you a little bit about uh, tonight's topic, you've probably heard that doing a detox is good for your health. You know, we all know beginning of the year, we want to do some sort of reset. Um, but do you deeply understand what this ancient practice is and why it's vital to your health. I think a lot of us tend to jump into doing things because it's a trend, um, perhaps without not fully realizing why it's going to truly benefit us and how to get the most out of it as we're going through a particular practice. So tonight, we want you to understand that the human body is about self-renewing, self-healing, and a self-cleansing organism as well. And when the conditions are optimal, the body has an opportunity to feel vibrant well-being. And that's our goal for you. We want you to radiate good health. So there's a lot of factors to consider as you're thinking about doing a detox, and these include environmental pollution, stress, and chemical-laden foods, which can interfere with our day-to-day -day process. And over time, these factors can lead to chronic illness. Detoxing brings balance back, and it helps our systems to function correctly again. And it also detoxification embodies resting, cleansing, nourishing, ourselves from the inside out. So that's why we brought this amazing panel together tonight for you. We are going to talk about how this ancient practice started, why this is an optimal time of the year to be doing this, um, what the steps are. We actually have an upcoming detox retreat at Dow Wellness, so we're going to walk you through the steps of how you can get the most out of a detox, how you can sign up for what we're doing, or how you can take this into your personal lives if you live in other parts of the country and aren't able to take advantage of this in person. Uh, so grab a notepad, get yourself comfortable, and with that, let's get started. So thank you once again, gentlemen, for joining tonight. Um, what I'd like to do is let's start with Dr. Mao. And Dr. Mao, can you explain to us, um, first of all, what the value is of having this full panel of practitioners on with us tonight? So welcome everyone. Uh, it's our pleasure to be um, <clears throat> together. This is actually the first time that all of our entire healing team is on this yes. healing hour. And we're hoping to do hopefully a few more of this uh, more often. Uh, and uh, so we've got uh, Dr. Albert uh, Baca from our Pasadena office. And we have Dr. Matthew Brand from our past, uh, the Newport Beach office. And then joining us later, we'll have Dr. Dow, Dr. Francis, Dr. So on. So, uh, and another one of our doctors who, uh, uh, Dr. Sally, who, who is on maternity leave, uh, she's just had her baby. So, yes. um, so, so on, on the, on the topic of, of this, I mean, we function as a team, right? Uh, and, and we pride ourselves that, that we are stronger because of team. Uh, each member brings a area of unique, um, expertise, experience, and, uh, and working together, it's been a real pleasure, and our patients benefit ultimately. That's that's why we're doing this, uh, because we know that uh, you know multiple brains are better than just one. And uh, so, and this is not to say that you know solo practitioners are out there that you're not doing a good job, but you just don't have the brain trust that we have. So what can I say, <laughs> right? So we, we 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 have an amazing team here. We so do. yeah, and you know, and talking about. Um, you know, Sally, Dr. Sally, who's on maternity leave, you know, maybe kind of jumping off that point and just basically saying, you know, for people who are thinking about pregnancy, fertility and all that, there's no question detoxification is a must because the baby is going to get everything you've got in you. So if you have, if you have toxins that gets passed on 
And so that, that, that's really an impetus. And uh, so with, with Dr. Sally, you know, before she started her fertility process, she went through the detox herself and really uh, optimized her health as a result of that. And now she has a beautiful baby. Oh, he's just scrumptious. <laughs> Um, okay. Well, let's talk about, let's start at the beginnings of this. How did this ancient practice of detoxification start? Where did that come from, Dr. Dow? Well, I think the, this ancient practice of detoxification comes from a long time ago. At the very beginning, it actually started as a way to try to avoid toxin. I think one of the first things is trying to detox. You want to try to avoid toxin. But in the old days, it's, it's not all that easy. I mean, we don't have the evidence of medicine and a lot of times we're in rural areas. Uh, knowledge is not very well distributed. So a lot of people have to deal with pathogens and things that makes us sick. So at the very beginning, toxins are things that makes us sick. And a lot of times the toxins initially wasn't things like plastic or things like environmental toxin that people are aware of. People are just aware of that I'm getting a virus. They don't even know they get a virus. They just know that they're getting sick. They are having vomiting. They're having nausea. They're having serious uh, diarrhea or gastrointestinal discomforts. So a lot of times at the very beginning, it was the toxin in the sense is more like, how do we deal with sickness? How do we get rid of some of the sickness that we have? So that was the initial understanding of toxin, is how do I get rid of these things we call pathogens, things that makes us sick, okay? That was at the very beginning. Obviously, through the centuries, and this Master Ge Hong is one of the most famous uh, Taoist physician, and that's gotta be around 1200 to uh, 1500 years ago now, where he really talked about how, you know, besides um, doing things that can be healthy in our lifestyle, he also actually promotes this whole concept of bigu, which is to get rid of all grains, uh, avoid all grains uh, every 49 days, avoid grains for one or two days, and using water and using vegetable juices and, and, and just eating fruits and something to cleanse our intestines, something very simple as that. So he started with that whole concept. And later on, as we go into the Song Dynasty, which is about 800 to 1,000 years ago, we have a very famous physician named Dr. Zhang Zihe, uh, who is also a Taoist physician, who really uh, perfected these uh, three ways of treatment of patients. It's called sweating method, it's called vomiting method, and it's called the purging method, which help to purge and help to cleanse toxin that's already in the body. So from that uh, sound of that foundation, it, it, uh, it starts the whole process of detoxification. So it has, in Chinese medicine, has a very long history, detoxification is a long history. And the reason for it is because if you can reduce and get rid of these toxins, you can prevent illnesses so people don't get sick as often. So almost all TCM TM physician, their focus besides getting somebody well with their sickness, it's trying to prevent further uh, sickness. So a lot of times, that's the reason why we have detoxification retreats that's coming up in a week or two here. And the reason is because we want patients, even when they're well, to try to get rid of environment to environmental toxin because nowadays, we really have a lot of toxins in our, in our body, in our environment. So it's even more necessary now than ever to get rid of things that invades and assaults of our body. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dow. Uh, Dr. Mao, can you please share with us, uh, first of all, anything additional that you would like to comment on about the history of detox? But then I would love if you could actually walk us through a case study as well so that people can understand an example firsthand of why this is beneficial to an individual. Most definitely. Um, if, if we can just make sure everybody's mute, uh, because we're seeing kind of, uh, we're hearing a lot of background noise. So as far as, um, you know, the, the need for detoxification, I'll just add a couple things on to what Dr. Dow said. So what he's basically saying is that the whole idea of cleansing and fasting has been around for thousands of years, and that it's more than ever 
we need it today. We've got plastics, we've got pesticides, we've got you know particulates in the air, we've got uh, arsenic in our food. We got stuff coming out of everywhere. And patients are presenting themselves into our office with fatigue, with um, uh, loss of memory, concentration, with um, uh, skin rashes, with intestinal bloating, gas, uh, chronic, you know, digestive issues, with difficulty sleeping, with anxiety. I mean, again, believe it or not, all of these and more are symptoms of toxic overload. Your body can take a lot, but at some point you're overloaded, and then that's when you get sick, right? And so Dr. Dow talked about exit points of how to get toxins out of your body through bowels, through urine, through sweat. We mm -hmm. don't practice the emetics anymore, okay? We don't, <laughs> we don't get people to vomit, right? That's, that's, that's the, the old style. We don't do that. But uh, everything else we do. Uh, case study, I will tell you about a very <laughs> personal experience. Um, we, we've helped a lot of patients through this, but I myself uh, became victim of mercury poisoning over 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And how I found out was I was working with a media coach on the eve of launching my Seekers of Longevity book. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the media coach was kind of giving me some cues and I just mm -hmm. can't, couldn't remember what she told me. And we just went back and forth, back and forth after four very frustrating hours. I gave up and I said, you know what, let's try another day. Came home, was lamenting uh, to my wife. And she said, you know, your memory is really bad, like really bad. And I said, really? Has it always been? No, she said about a, in the last year or so. And I go to the office and my staff tells me, man, you've got really bad memory. Mm -hmm. So now it's got my attention. So now I get, became concerned like, well, wait a minute, something's going on with me, right? And I'm pretty healthy as I, I thought I was, a pretty well. And... Uh, <clears throat> So at a cocktail party, I ran into a, uh, a doctor, a toxicologist who used, he, he was the expert witness for Aaron Brockovich. Remember Aaron Brockovich? I mean, this is kind of a, this is a real deal here. He goes, have you had your blood tested for heavy metals? And I said, no, I haven't. So mm -hmm. underwent some testing. My mer I, when they came back, the mercury was through the roof, three times higher than normal levels. Wow. Real high mercury. And mm -hmm. so I thought, God, is it the fish I was eating? No, it turns out that, that it was due to the silver amalgam filling that I drilled out a year prior. And I had like, <laughs> don't do what I do, right? I mean, like eight to 10 silver amalgam drilled out and replaced. And on top of that, I didn't do it with um, building a rubber dam, which they were supposed to isolate this stuff when they drill out so you don't swallow it. And mm -hmm. then give you oxygen mass so you don't inhale it because as a drilling out, these are fine, you know, pulverized uh, mercury dust. Well, I was choking. I remember choking on swallowing a lot of stuff and just was having a horrible time. Six hours later on the chair, I just went home. Um, so it turned out a year later, all that, all that mercury went into my body, went into my brain and affected me in a very profound way that I didn't even know until yeah. I began to work. So, all right, so what to do now? I've got all this mercury and I feel like, uh, I, you know, and I've got pressure because, you know, six weeks later, I had to go on a media tour for my book. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so Dr. Dahlgren said, well, you can do chelation using EDTA or DMSO. These are the industrial solvents that they use to bind to the mercury and then, and then uh, eliminate it through your, your kidneys and your bladder. And mm -hmm. so I asked him, this sounds really good, but I, and people don't usually ask about this. What is mm -hmm. the downside of chelation? He said, well, you could have kidney damage, maybe 15 to 30% of kidney wow. function could be damaged, you know, because these are solvents that are kind of ripping through your kidneys. I mm -hmm. said, oh, no, thanks. I'm not going to go in and do three hours a day of IV three times a week for three months, which is what he prescribed. I said, I'm, I'm going to do Chinese medicine. So I came back and uh, my brother and I put our heads together mm -hmm. and we basically <clears throat> came up with this protocol, combining best of both worlds, using Chinese medicine and mm -hmm. using the best of what Western medicine has to offer. And within six weeks of this intense detox, I woke up, my memory came back. And I went on a, a TV tour for my mm -hmm. book 
and a book became a bestsellers in 22 languages. I guess, I guess it really helped. It rescued my, um, my, my body and, and to top it off. I didn't even know that I was overweight. I lost 15 pounds from those six weeks of just cleansing. And, you know, so the, the, you know, the rest of the session, the doctors are going to cover different aspects of the uh, detox. So, you know, after that experience, we began to run these detox retreats for our patients because I had this amazing personal experience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I retested my mercury, my blood, my mercury is now way down, you know, below what sort of normal. And, uh, and I test myself, you know, periodically. And I also go into these detoxification retreats uh, regularly. If there's an empty spot, I'll jump in and I'll do it myself. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's, I mean, first of all, on a personal level, it's incredible that you got to see firsthand how your body was impacted by this, particularly knowing you live quite a healthy lifestyle to begin with, and yet still these factors uh, imploded in you. Um, but secondly, I love that our viewers can understand this literally could happen to the best of anyone, and it's something to bring into our lifestyle on a continual basis. It's not like you just detox and walk away for the rest of your life. This is ongoing to optimize your health in the best possible ways. So um, you keep listening because now we're gonna start diving into things on uh, within each category of how the detox retreats and protocols address things. So what I'd like to do first of all is, um, let's start with you, Albert. And um, can you talk about the incorporation of a cleansing diet? For instance, how does an individual eat differently during the detox? And what's happening nutritionally to the body throughout this process? Uh, thanks, Tiffany. Thanks for having me on here. Um, one of the things that I think, when people think detox or... I think the first thing that comes to mind a lot of the time is um, fasting, mm -hmm. only eating juices or you know or green juices all the time or just water cleanses or just soups things like that and what's different about our detox that dr dow and dr mao have have incorporated into our practice is the fact that we feed you you get fed right. on our detox and uh and and for us it's all about reducing that inflammation reduce you know helping your liver and kidneys gently detox the body but nothing too extreme um eating healthy lots of healthy greens lots of uh lots of you know uh, lots of grains and things like that even some proteins in there too so it's not strictly a plant-based diet at the same time but mm -hmm. we're really trying to super saturate your body with lots of vitamins minerals uh vegetables that are going on there and using our chinese nutrition as um as different uh, different jump off points, like uh, for instance, azuki beans are on there, and azuki beans have a lot of fiber. They're mm -hmm. high in like you know potassium, magnesium, iron. They have a lot more protein than like two eggs, even like a little quarter cup of it. So that's on the that's on the menu. Mm -hmm. um, so we really incorporate lots of foods. Uh, so one of the things we want to want to do is I'll, I'll just illustrate a quick rundown of what we actually have our clients do for a week. And upon rising, we're actually having warm water with lemon mm -hmm. and a probiotic or acidophilus supplement, right? Mm -hmm. So we're doing the lemon juice to kind of get everything going to make sure that everything is you're activating the liver to release pox, cleanse the intestines. You're going to be having lots of greens going in your body. So you want to actually allow it to, to help move things through as best possible as well, too. So lemon water, acidophilus, first thing in the morning. Uh, starting out during the day with a very simple breakfast, like a like a you know a brown rice or oat bran cereal. Dr. Mao has decocted a uh, a whole blend of you know grains, legumes, and Chinese herbs as a porridge that you can actually have. It's really easily digestible. I cook mine personally in a slow cooker overnight, so you know it's nice and warm and and um and i add a little bit of almond you know almond milk a little some berries in there too maybe a little cinnamon my kids love it so that, you know i'm feeding them healthy stuff too mm -hmm. um anyway that'd be like a, an suggestion for the suggestion for the morning breakfast uh lunches like i was talking about earlier um you know a little bit of quinoa or like a millet something very gentle with you means uh, having some seaweed having some tofu having some shiitake mushroom 
you know, uh, sweet potatoes, Swiss chard, all those things among the Chinese pharmacopoeia, um, you know, in regard to nutrition is, are, are really good at clearing the heat and inflammation from your body. When I say clearing heat, it's like the body goes under stress and you start to get into a tense mode. And it's almost like not having oil, not having enough oil lubrication in your engine. So everything starts to heat up. And mm -hmm. that, all these foods themselves can help to clear out to run a little bit more efficiently in your body. Um, the mid-morning snack, I'm sorry, before the breakfast and the lunch, the mid-morning snack is actually a 12 ounce of vegetable juice. So you see all the green juices, everybody makes green juices on the market these days. So a 12 ounce green juice and not or, but and a vegetable broth, a 12 ounce vegetable broth. Uh, to describe the vegetable broth, it's like a you know, you put a whole bunch of vegetables in a stock pot for about an hour, hour or two, cook it down. Greens, Brussels sprouts, seaweed, turmeric, shiitake mushrooms, watercress, a lot of things in there to help detox the body, nourish you. It is, uh, for me, it is one of the most nourishing things, especially after not eating well for a few days. Uh, when, you know, my wife and I would turn to that, go, oh, this really starts to make us feel, feel really good. The minute we start getting any type of uh, any types of colds or people around us are getting colds, we start to incorporate, incorporate that into our diet as well, just to keep our immune system strong. Um, so with this, so rising, you know, is the lemon, lemon water in the capsules of acidophilus or probiotics, the breakfast, the mid morning snack, the lunch, you're doing the afternoon snack is the vegetable broth and the vegetable juice again, doing those two things. Um, dinner is a similar thing as you had for lunch and nighttime you just have a nice little tea well in the process of the nutrition you'll also be incorporating some, some herbal uh, formula decoction I think Matthew will talk about a little bit later as well mm -hmm. and also Albert can you just clarify for everyone because I realized that we haven't actually discussed at this point the people who are attending our retreat and experiencing this diet plan is everybody together at this point or are they still at home this is pre meeting up as a group oh if we're talking about the the detox retreat everybody's here together you know okay. so like on a saturday and a sunday i think it's the 19th and the 20th coming up uh everybody's there together which is nice so you know during the day you know the director uh, we'll be talking about how, you know, emotions play a big part in de detoxification, how all the different uh, harmful chemicals and substances that are out there that can bog you down and, and really put a, a strain on your system. Um, but, and then we're doing some Tai Chi together. We're eating together. We're, we're you know, we're learning together, uh, sharing together, and as well as getting these treatments and, uh, you know, the acupuncture, the, you know, um, the lymphatic drainage. I think Francis is going to talk about that later. Yes. Um, right. So, um, you know, all this is done together, which is really nice because everybody's there, kind of sipping their tea, eating their apples, drinking their green juice, and going, you know, we're all in this together. Let's share and really support each other. And it's nice to have a second day of it so you can kind of experience it firsthand and then uh, come back with your experience from the, from the previous day. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I know you are going to have to run off now. Um, but we really appreciate you being with us tonight Absolutely. and um, enjoy a lovely evening and birthday wishes. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Uh, now I would like to switch over. Uh, for those of you that have been watching the episode so far, you probably noticed that we have Francis Lamb and Soanne Park who have joined us now from our Santa Monica clinic. Uh, they finished with their patients. So what I want to do is unmute them. And I am going to hand this over to Francis. And my question to you, Francis, is Albert was talking about on a dietary level what individuals will be experiencing. Can you talk about some of the special rituals? For instance, um, skin brushing, what is lymphatic tuna, and also uh, cupping. And just so you both know, ladies, there's something that seems to be a little bit of sound kickback. So I don't know if there's a way, I'm not quite sure what's causing that sound on your end, but if there's a way to minimize that. Is anything moving around on your surface? No? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I think if you can just keep anything from the speaker away from there, it seems to go on quiet now. So I'm sorry, Francis, I'm gonna hand over to you and go ahead and, and answer that now for us. Okay, so there are three different um, things, three different um, 
per se, uh, techniques that we use or we employ to, the goal is to make sure that your lymphatic system is working properly and efficiently. So the lymph system, the main goal of lymph system, right, is to, one, it's going to filter lymph. Lymph is the fluid in which your red blood cells, your white blood cells, and your platelets move through. Throughout our body, a lot of our tissue also gives out a lot of cellular debris. So the lymph system also acts to filter out cellular debris. Throughout our lives too, whether it's environmental, whether it's um, food, uh, different bacteria, different viruses, different toxins also um, go into the body. So our lymph system, again, helps to um, gather up those toxins and release them. However, if the lymph system is overburdened, it can't do its job efficiently. So this is where um, the first thing that we would employ is skin brushing. Now think of your skin, it's the largest organ, mm -hmm. right? And your skin, if you think about the face and all the care that we take in um, making sure our pores are open, removing all the clogged up uh, cellular debris. So that's what we need to do with our skin actually too. And in that way, we actually help assist the lymph system working properly. So the skin brushing is a gentle, we use a natural um, bristle brush. Mm -hmm. We're using very gentle strokes. We're following the meridians, um, the acupuncture channels. Mm -hmm. And again, the idea is to one, open up the pores, Right, we're gonna take out the dead skin layer so we can start releasing different toxins. Mm -hmm. um, two, we're creating circulation. We need that blood flow. If things become stagnant, things aren't also flowing um, efficiently. Mm -hmm. And three, so let's see, we did um, lymphatic drainage, right? We did right. the um, circulation blood flow and mm -hmm. the exfoliation, okay? So we've opened up your pores so the next step that we're going to do is the Twina, lymphatic Twina. And these are repetitive, very gentle strokes, also following the meridians. Mm -hmm. And the idea behind that is to also increase the circulation. So a lot of times, if you're overburdened with toxins, things are sluggish, things aren't moving in their natural flow. So we need to make sure that we can do what we can to um, uh, make it efficient, right? So that's the idea behind the lymphatic tweena that we do. Uh, and that that's done with the hands, Francis, or is and it? That is done with the hands. Okay. So that's done with the hands. From mm -hmm. there, the next step, now that we've um, increased circulation, we've exfoliated, so things are now rising to the surface of the skin. And so after that, we're going to do some cupping. So cupping is also a wonderful tool. The idea is to get that suction, right? So it's lifting up the skin, it's pulling up the muscle layers to open it up, right? So we're increasing the oxygen. So blood flow is able to uh, be also again um, flowing uh, very well. And from there it's pulling up that debris so it can release much easier. So those are the three steps that we use to really help support your lymph, um, the lymphatic system to work efficiently. And remember, your lymph system is a part of your immune system. It has to remove the debris. Its main function is to help remove toxins to the body. Mm -hmm. So if we do become overburdened and the body can't release it, um, that can create more disease. Um, so that's the main goal is to detoxify uh, and open the body, open up the pores. So going back to the sweating, mm -hmm. so that would be the next step. So we've sort of primed your body to go to the sweating process. Okay, so this is a preliminary stage then towards that next step. It's almost like you're prepping your body, exactly. All the different stages from skin brushing, opening up, the pores, taking off the dead skin layers, to mm -hmm. the twina, also it just increasing your circulation, and then through the cupping, bringing up all that cellular debris, all the toxins, really right up to the surface so they can be released. Okay, I, I mean, I can say firsthand to all of you, I've experienced each of these treatments, and 
you just feel lush after. You feel as if you literally removed an entire, actually layers from your being. And you feel it not just on a physical level, but you feel it on an emotional and a spiritual level too, which is very unique. Um, and you just feel as if you can tune in more towards your being, your center of being. Um, so it, it's wonderful to be able to take an opportunity to participate in something like this. Now, when they're doing it all together at the retreat, Francis, you have all of the tools there for them, right? There's nothing that they need to bring with them? No, there's nothing they need to bring. They get their own personal um, bristle brush, which they can take home and give that to them. And uh, we do use individual cups and um, everyone will also go through those three steps at the retreat. Okay. Terrific. Thank you so much. Uh, let me ask you, is there anything else that you would want us to be aware of in regards to what to expect? I, well, definitely um, there may be some uh, going through the whole process because you are detoxifying, you're releasing a lot of things that have been a part of you for mm -hmm. a certain period of time. So there may be some side effects. You may feel um, some headaches, some light headaches. Mm -hmm. You may get just a little nauseous. But really, most people feel extremely relaxed. Okay. So don't even think about anything else other than just being here. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, Francis. I know, Francis, you as well need to leave because you are going to teach a class from what I understand, correct? Correct. Yes, so thank you so much for joining us this evening. I hope that that was very insightful for everyone. Thank and you. Jenny. Wish you well. And now what I'd like to do is switch over to Soan since we have her right here with us. <laughs> so Soan, what I would love if you could explain to us is that um, during the retreat, a focus also uh, placed on providing a very unique experience, which is infrared sauna. Can you explain to us why this is beneficial and also how you ensure that all of the participants that are attending the retreat are able to experience this? Mm. Okay, so first of all, far infrared sauna is a little bit different than um, just com conventional sauna we usually use. It's in easy ability because it's penetrate deeply under the superficial layer of your skin. Mm -hmm. And then maybe some of you never heard about far infrared sauna. So let me little bit explain what, how it's different, how it works. Uh, um, this far, far infrared uh, the wave, that means it's therapeutic heat delivered by the far infrared light. So which is mm -hmm. a little bit below the visible light from the, the sunlight spectrum. So it pro produces longer longer wave longer wavelengths to penetrate body tissue and then it's okay. in rich even it reaches seven about se several inches deep and it vibrate your cell of your tissue so this is tissue vibration shakes so pre store the toxin inside so it can easily release throughout the, your uh, sweat or like a bowel movement or urination so so this far infrared Therapy feels maybe same as a regular as a heat therapy, but uh, the sweat produced during the process is different. It's, um, it's including heavy metal and also fat soluble toxin, which are not found in the regular sweat from the ex exercise or regular sauna. So it's very unique. And uh, so when, can you explain to us, because some people might have not experienced this before, is it a room that they walked into? Is it an apparatus? What does it look like that they're walking into? Oh, okay. So during the detox retreat, um, you uh, you you will be in the lie down dome for about twenty minutes after you take a, a vitamin C and the electrolytes and the water before and after treatment. So. And the, the uh, far infrared sauna is the temperature is between 115 to 150 degree. So you're going to feel very warm and even you're going to sweat a lot. And after sauna, you're going to feel fresh to your skin. You, you will see some red patches on your skin, but it's considered normal. Mm -hmm. so it's, especially if after you're taking um, niacin, vitamins B3, 
you're gonna yeah. feel because it, uh, niacin actually expand your blood vessel to create more circulation, so easily can get rid of all the toxin from your body. Okay, and do they wear clothing during this process, or no? I, you know, I know some people always wonder, like, how do I walk into that room to experience? So we're gonna provide a robe, so you, you don't need to wear uh, worry about any clothing stuff. So basically, you're gonna uh, undress completely, or you can keep just underwear on. Mm -hmm. So inside dome sauna, you're gonna uh, we pre. Uh, Maybe it's better I do to take all clothes off on dress. Mm -hmm. Well, you get more of the benefits, then it's getting in every cell of your body. <laughs> That's right. And what about once that is completed, uh, do they take a rest afterwards or do they jump immediately into another activity? So after sweating, usually you want to feel a little bit, can be tired. Mm -hmm. And then, but after drink enough water, and then um, we don't want to move, uh, um, like a rapidly move right away. I want to a little bit relax and then uh, take a slowly, move slowly, get out, out from the uh, sauna a little bit slowly. Or because you might feel a little bit dizzy mm -hmm. or a little bit um, like um, tired too. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Is there anything else that you would want them to be aware of in respect to experiencing this? Uh, I just want to emphasize the reason why this far infrared sauna is very like uh, important as part of detox retreat because it creates a synergy effect. Mm -hmm. So after you did a, you received all the acupuncture treatment and then um, detox re, uh, detox um, twina after yeah. twina it bring all the toxin to the, your surface. Mm -hmm. After stimulated lymphatic system is perfect to get all the toxin from your body. So. Mm -hmm. So this goes back to the purging again. Now we're purging from inner skin layers out. Yes, because it's also speed up the, the process of, of the detoxification. So I strongly recommend you guys get all the, enjoy the benefit of detox retreat, mm -hmm. including detox sauna. Yes, and it feels very good. Again, for those that haven't experienced this, you're not going to feel necessarily pain coming out of the actual experience of the infrared sauna. It actually feels very gentle. It's the heat that you're feeling mostly during that process. Because the temp um, yeah, temperature is between 115 to 100, 115 to 150. So also if you are very sensitive to high temperature, just to let us know. So you, we can adjust the temperature but we still uh, emphasize you sweat enough. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, and as you mentioned, you're keeping them hydrated as well. So once they step out of that, you'll make sure that they're replenishing uh, their mm -hmm. hydration needs, electrolytes and whatnot. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Sun. I appreciate it. Yes. Um, so what I would like to do now is I'm going to switch over and Matthew, if you can answer some questions for us, because I know you do a lot with herbal therapy. So can you explain why this is an essential component of the program as well? Sure. Um, so I think everyone's kind of getting the idea that we're all working together, not just as a team, but also all of these uh, methods that we're using are there to make sure that you're getting the benefits of the program. It's all specifically to make sure that, you know, you're getting rid of toxins, that your body's doing what it does naturally, which is clear things out of its system. Mm -hmm. um, that's what, you know, the liver does naturally. That's what the kidney does naturally. Um, and that's what our bowels do on, on a daily basis. And so the herbs are there to really help add another dimension to, um, to this therapy. Um, so as doctors Mao and Dao brought up earlier on, they came up with this together, um, basing their ideas upon, um, you know, some 12th century formulations that, um, that were around at the time to really detoxify the body. Um, and that was at the time, as Dr. Dow said earlier on, based upon the idea of getting rid of pathogens. And so if you're able to actually effectively get rid of those things that are really bogging your body down, attacking it, making you sick, um, mm -hmm. then your body's able to do what it does best, which is heal. Um, and you want to do that as early as you can before it actually becomes disease. 
And so this isn't, we're not looking to necessarily, when we're talking about detoxing, we're not talking about you already being in a bad place. You can be, but we're looking at this being maintenance. We're talking about it being maybe even subclinical in terms of your presentation. Um, this could be just, you had a very, uh, you had a lot of parties going on in December, <laughs> and yeah. this is a way of making sure that you're uh, you're back on track uh, for this January. Whatever it may be, you want to make sure that your body isn't bogged down by all these things that you're that you exposed it to. Um, so the herbs that we're using, um, I won't go through the list. It's actually a pretty long list of herbs that we have in there. Um, just a couple examples, like we're using indigo, we're using burdock seeds. We're using uh, tree peony, root bark, um, prunella, things like that. And what all of these herbs really have in common, if we look at them and you break them all down, one of the big things that they all tend to do is they re reduce chronic inflammation. And I think we all pretty much know at this point, chronic inflammation is bad and chronic inflammation leads to disease. And so obviously the sooner we are able to treat that, the better. And while obviously when you're not in the retreat, um, you're going to be continuing this process on by, you know, eating well, the other step that you're going to be continuing on for, you know, maybe a week or two, or even a month or two after, you know, you were to do this detox retreat, you want to continue this process of making sure that your inflammation is down. The other big thing that it's going to help you do is go to the bathroom easier. So we want to make sure that you're able to pee without discomfort. Um, you may pee a little bit more while you're taking the herbs and a little bit more while you're on the detox diet. Um, and that's the point is really to flush things out. Um, but you're not going to have any discomfort. Same thing with, you know, having your bowel movements regular. Um, we all know how terribly you can feel if you don't have a regular bowel movement. Um, and I'm sure you all know by now how much we'd love to talk to you about your poop. But pooping is important. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and then the other thing that we see that these herbs do is they help reduce uh, skin irritations and rashes. Um, so that, you know, anything that you may see, it may erupt temporarily because the skin obviously is the biggest organ that we have. It's the skin is where we see toxins really emerge after a while. And so you may have a temporary, um, you know, some temporary acne, maybe the rashes get a little worse temporarily, but then ultimately it's going to subside. And why? Because it's moving out of your body. And some of the nice side effects of taking these herbs is ultimately you're going to have less pain. You'll have less swelling and edema in your body, and you might even get a better night's sleep. Okay. And so from what I understand then, um, they'll be taking different herbs uh, throughout the weekend of the retreat. And then mm -hmm. do they continue this program then post-retreat as well? They're still continuing to take herbs? Yes, absolutely. So okay. it's very important to notice the, or to note that the detox retreat is a first important step uh, to wellness. Um, it's, it's getting you to be aware of what we do. I mean, obviously, if you're doing a detox with us just one-on-one, -on -one, we are also ha you know, happy to answer all these questions as well. But um, but the detox retreat is the first step of getting you to get rid of your toxins. So you'll be doing it during that weekend, but then you're going to continue for a week. And as I said before, um, you know, it may continue on for another week or two. It may continue on for another, you know, month or two. Um, it depends on you. And obviously we can customize your herbs. I and mean, while we have a base set of herbs that we use to de detox and cleanse, we always have to take into consideration you and you know what your constitution is um, so that we can support you as well as help clear things out. Okay. And during this period, Matthew, uh, if they, an individual is on other medications or other supplements, formulas for whatever might be the individual reasons of this, do they continue to take those additionally or is it on a case-by-case -case basis? How do you determine what you want a person to do during the detoxification process? So, um, so first of all, in general, yes, continue with it, but more specifically, um, 
we we need to we need to talk with you about what you're actually on and what you're taking and when we're talking about what you're taking this includes both medications that you're taking as well as uh, any kind of supplementation um, that you're doing on a regular basis um, most of the time there's no you know conflict um, but at the same time it's really important that you know you communicate to us and in this case it would be you know francis and so on who are having you know doing this upcoming retreat just to let them know what what you're doing um so that they can be sensitive to that most of the time again there's not really an issue but we still need we still need to know okay and what about exercise can you tell us what exercise are they going to be doing throughout this sure um so um it's I believe for this uh, upcoming seminar, we're going to be doing um, Qigong. And so the Qigong is, uh, there's a variety of different steps. So there's a variety of different foundational Taoist practices that have been around for, you know, for thousands of years at this point. Um, and uh, doctors Mao and Dao have really put together a nice uh, set of exercises that do a variety of things. And so one of them is uh, a set of something called tapping. And I think I've talked about this with you before, um, Tiffany, where it's, you yeah. look kind of silly and you're kind of hitting yourself and whatnot. Yes. It's, it's a example with everyone yes. from our previous chats. I loved it. Yes. So it's, it's a very gentle thing, but ultimately what you're doing is you're getting, um, at the lymphatic system. So what we're doing is we're teaching you outside of, you know, getting lymphatic brushing and all that. We're teaching you how to take care of yourself and how to get that lymphatic uh, system really flowing on a daily basis. Because if you're not moving, that lymphatic system is just kind of a drainage ditch that kind of has too much, too many leaves stuck in it and it's not really emptying out. Mm -hmm. So, so we'll be getting you to move around. It, they're all nice and gentle exercises. Um, and they're for everybody, you know, uh, Qigong and Taoist exercises can be for anyone that's in a chair um, to, you know, they can be as complicated as, you know, on a gymnastic level. Um, but everybody has to start off as if they're a baby. And so this, you know, that the weekend that we'll be doing this, it's, we're treating everyone like a baby. So, and everyone should know that the most foundational practices are in fact the most important. Um, and so, the exercises are for you to to learn, uh, to ask questions about, and to practice on your own. Okay. Thank you so much, Matthew. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Uh, my next question is actually for Dr. Dow. Dr. Dow, can you share with us what uh, individuals will be experiencing on uh, an emotional level and how you address stress during this retreat? Oh, hold on one second, Dr. Dow. It's not unmuting. One second here. Hmm. Can you try on your side, Dr. Dow, and see if it will... Oh, there we go. Okay, you're okay. live now. You can hear me now? Yes. Okay, sounds like a Verizon commercial. <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> can you hear me now? Uh, anyway, so as you know, toxin is not just produced by our body. Mm -hmm. We also hold on to a lot of emotional toxins as we go through our life experience. And sometimes it's a lot of times holding grudges and holding things that's really not necessary is time to letting go of things because emotional toxins are actually, well, emotional stress and things in emotions can create friction, can create toxic things to our body. We frequently say emotions are one of the pathogens. If uh, it's out of balance, if it's something that is uh, destructive, um, they can be destructive to our lives. So in our um, emotional detox um, type of session that we do is that we help people um, imagining and going back to some of the emotional trauma they have. And then we do some acupressure. We teach them how to do some acupressure. It's an interactive session where that the participants help each other uh, letting go some of the emotional trauma that we that we hold, um, the realities we all hold some. And it's, it's good 
um, a safe, a good environment for us to let that go. So uh, we, I will lecture, and usually we, we talk a little bit about emotional um, detoxification because they are, we call it seven emotions, and every single emotion can actually create toxic situations. Uh, it's not just anger. It's not just depression. Um, even joy, excitation, overexcitation can be an issue actually sometimes. Um, so there are other, uh, so, so there are a bunch of emotional factors that we look into uh, to help people in detoxifying, cleanse their emotional uh, uh, garbage, shall we say, or emotional uh, things that they hold on. So we want to let that go. Okay. And that's done as uh, in the group environment or a group and individual? It's in the group environment. And obviously, as they go through physical detoxification, a lot of times their emotional detoxification, uh, detoxification comes naturally through the physical detoxification. But the actual session is an interactive session. The whole group work together. Uh, everybody work together in working together in interactively. Okay. Now, acupuncture is actually what is a primary um, element that's activating the detox. Can you explain to us what's happening with our organs and why this is so essential to the detoxification process as well? I think a lot of people already know what acupuncture is, and some of it might be very basic. But as you know, we put, uh, we put very fine needles in different spots of our body. We call them points. Mm -hmm. There are literally thousands of points in our body for different purposes. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we do is that uh, during our detoxification protocol, protocol, we select a specific set of points that's used specific for detoxification. As I talked earlier before, there is the sweating methodology. There's the purging methodology. We are not doing emetic um, vomiting methodology anymore. That's the old fashioned way of doing things. But we're talking about more sweating, more purging. And more importantly, there's the third methodology is actually what we call blood activating circulatory. That means to improve circulation because a lot of time when you improve the circulation, you can bring some of the toxin from deep, deep area of our body. And because um, a lot of time the toxin lodges, uh, dislodges in certain area of our body, especially fat areas, adipose tissues. And fat area don't necessarily get a lot of blood flow uh, doesn't necessarily get a lot of sweat glands. So a lot of times these toxins are much, much more difficult to get out. So a lot of times we have to do a combination methods. We have to purge, we have to sweat, we have to activate blood flow. So that's the reason why we do exercise, we do a sauna, we do cupping, we get scrubbing. Uh, we do uh, basically acupuncture treatment here where we are stimulating points to actually activate all the blood flow throughout all the glands in our body because all the glands, all the organs in our body has the capacity to hold toxin. But if our body, if our, all our organs function to their optimal state, we can therefore detox and clean out the, to the toxins that's dislodged in certain part of our body. So we select points that goes to different organs, specifically kidneys, the livers, uh, specific the gallbladder, specifically the lung, even breathing air, the lung, the stomach, the spleen, the lymphatic system, the nervous system, the brain, um, even the fats in our abdomens. We're trying to get things jiggle up and mm -hmm. get all excited so that we can <clears throat> draw it out, draw it out. So, you know, we also learn, you know, from the animal kingdom when we look at uh, sushi, I mean, a lot of people love sushi. Mm -hmm. And as you know, sushi is wonderfully tasting, it's highly addictive. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing about sushi is that nowadays, uh, unfortunately, some fishes are quite toxic. And let's take, a, for example, tuna. I mean, the best part of the tuna is it's that fat area we call toro. Wow. And unfortunately, toro, it's the fat part, the belly fat of the tuna. And guess what happens? We found that a lot of mercury dislodges and they are fat-like. So they like to sit in that 
fat belly. So <clears throat> if you eat Toro, you're going to get a lot of mercury uh, going into your body. Funny things, you know, the things like the canned tuna, where it's water-based and it's got a lot of muscle and doesn't have much fat. They found that that's actually does not have as much, very little mercury in that. So in water it, tuna? In, it, water it, in the water tuna, but in the muscle of the tuna. Okay. So, so you can see is that uh, where does the toxin like mercury goes to? Okay. Mm -hmm. So a lot of toxins fat like. They like to go into fat there of the animal. Well, no different than us. I was it, just thinking that. So it, literally, it, that's just a few minutes. It's in our belly fat. Right. You know, uh, you know uh, organs, you know, all the fats between the organs. We got all that fat there. So, I mean, the sense is that I hate to say this obesity is one of the major causative factors for cancer. And mm -hmm. the reason why that is, you know, used to be we pick on smoking. Now we do pick on the obesity and the reasons because the fat is sometimes not just the fat, it's what's in the fat that's creating the problem for our body. Mm -hmm. So when we do the detox, inevitably we're gonna have to cleanse some of this fat because if we cleanse and get rid of some of this fat, the mercury comes out, the lead comes out, the arsenic comes out, all those junk, maybe even plastic comes out. I mean, we got all these microplastic that's, I don't know, it's in our body somewhere. Pretty soon we're gonna be a plasticized body, you know? So I just thought of the expression, junk in your trunk, and now I'm gonna have that in my mind. Is that yes, right? yeah, I'll be a plastic man. But yeah. anyway, um, we need to get rid of that. I don't like the concept of having like little plastic molecules sitting in my body somewhere. So. I think these are kind of things that we, we do in our uh, acupuncture treatment is that we stimulate our organs and our glands to function at its optimal state. So in those how to excrete toxins, whether it's intestines, whether it's kidney, whether it's bladder, whether it's gallbladder, we're trying to help them to maximize their strength and their function so that it can do the best that they can. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, for those of you that are listening in right now live, uh, we're coming up on the hour. So if you have questions, we would be more than happy to answer these for you. I would like to ask that you please take a moment now to uh, post your questions. So if you're on Facebook Live, uh, Leah Jonas, our operations director, is moderating on there with you and she will take your questions and pass them over to us. And keep in mind that your questions can relate to detoxification, um, but it really can be about any topic and we would be happy to answer them for you. You're so lucky, you've got literally all of the practitioners on with you right now, so take advantage. And then likewise, for those of you on Zoom, you have your Q&A box and your chat box, so you're welcome to type in any questions that you have and we will respond to those. Um, we're gonna keep going here, uh, but if you can please start writing in your questions now, we would appreciate it. Um, so Dr. Dow, my next question for you is, um, what can individuals anticipate post-detox? Well, first of all, they should feel very relaxed. Mm -hmm. okay? uh, to start with, I mean, you know, if you've been probed, you've been massaged, you've been like sweated, I mean, you should feel light. Mm -hmm. uh, so in my experience, I feel light and relaxed. And sometimes a little tired because it takes some energy to burn fat, some energy to relieve and discharge. So you might even feel, and actually a lot of time during the therapy, we, we hydrate you quite a bit, but sometimes you might be feeling a lot of thirsty. So a lot of time we still advise you to continue to drink a lot of fluid when you get home. So I think in the pulse um, treatment, you should feel pretty relaxed and you should feel just your mind so clear uh, during that period of time and you're going to feel wonderful in the sense that you want to go home and you're going to relax, you're going to keep yourself warm, and you can continue that detox when you get home. And I always suggest, you know, for the next week, try not to start with a steak uh, meal right after that. I mean, you know, give yourself, let yourself like enter your normal life. And a lot of time we say the best way to detox is not start with a toxin in the first place. Okay, so think about, you know, I did this, what can I do now to maintain it? What can I do to have a good lifestyle so I don't go back and drink 
tons of alcohol and go back at like loads of coffee and uh, uh, loads of sweets and all the stuff. That's not so good for me in the sense of artificial coloring and preservative. Stay away from that. Find ways so where that you don't have to have those items. So I think the first thing is really not just feeling relaxed, but also trying to see if you can bring that into your life. Okay. And what about on a spiritual level? What is an individual experiencing just to attain um, greater presence within themselves? And, and, you know, the whole essence of this is greater well-being overall. What would you want them to be aware of? I, I actually think it's the whole process of being mindful. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you feel so much better, I think the spiritual aspects are so much better is actually to spread that to other people to help other people, to go home and find what you learn in a detox and bring it into your family, okay? Mm -hmm. Bring it into your friends and the knowledge that you learn, spread it. Help people to understand, hey, you know, the mercury, hey, the lead, the heavy metals, they are very much fat-like. They like to dislodge there. What should we do with fats? You know, those kind of things that we need to really think about. And so you can spread some of those knowledge around and help people with their own detoxification. Um, you know, I wouldn't be unhappy to be able to help your family and your friends to come over and do some more detox, uh, but I also want you to bring that principle back and share with others. I think helping others is reinforcing your own behaviors. So I think in the spiritual sense, we are all here as one. In oneness, we want to help others. By helping others, we help ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dow. All right, we have some questions coming in. I'm going to unmute all three of you. Um, I think what I'd like to do is this first question. Whoops, I'm trying to get... So, Anne, can you hit unmute on your side? There we go. Okay. Uh, I'd like to direct this first question to Sue Ann since she will be facilitating uh, the event at the retreat. One of our individuals would like to know, do we meet with doctors or acupuncturists individually at the detox event? Mm. At the detox event, Frances, she gonna, um, she gonna be directing, so she gonna give acupuncture treatment. Okay. He's the one main doctor. She going to give acupuncture treatment. Okay. So she will be doing an acupuncture treatment for each individual that's attending. Yes. Okay. And that takes place once or that takes place more than once throughout the weekend? Just one time. Yeah. One time a day. So Friday, uh, Saturday and Sunday for each day. Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, the next question is... Um, Uh, And I think this can, Matthew, perhaps you can answer this one. After the detox weekend, do we need to come to you for more treatments for it to be effective? Um, While it is, while you don't have to, it's generally recommended that you do continue to come in. Obviously, when we meet with you or when Frances would meet with you that day, um, she's going to be seeing and assessing where you're at and um, what your condition is. And, This is, as we said before, um, the detox is just a beginning of a process. And Mm -hmm. so if we can see, meet with you again, you know, in any of the offices to continue that process, that would ideally be best. Um, But obviously there's a lot of homework that you guys are going to be sent home with. There's a lot of work that you're going to have to do on your own. So you're going to have to exercise. You're going to have to eat well. You're going to have to take your herbs. But you can't take your herbs forever without us checking in with you. So ultimately, even if it's not just then the week after, um, we do want to see how you're doing. And so it is a good idea in general just to continue to come in. Okay. I just uh, want to say, I want to add on to it, please. is that, you know, in the old Taoist tradition, it's every 49 days you oh. to detox. Why is that? Um, it's a cycle. It's a seven times seven cycle. Okay. And, uh, um, it's a very interesting seven times seven cycle. really relates with a reproductive cycle, especially in the woman's endocrinology. Mm-hmm. So a lot of time it has to do with a 49 day is like our energy shifts in about 49 days. Mm-hmm. So in the sense is that, you know, it's, it's like we have to keep uh, renewing ourselves in that 49 days period. 
that is also seasonal. In 49 days, we are actually into a small season, small season, which is quite a bit. So that's the old Taoist concept. So, I mean, you're supposed to detox every 49 days. So that is uh, the, the old concept. We don't try to force people to do that. But, you know, the, the truth is if you eat right, you know, have a clean diet and uh, trying to uh, have a good lifestyle, you, you, it would be really helpful. But the reality is that we live in a chemical soup, in a chemical mm-hmm. environment. So we do need to do detox. Even when you do such a good lifestyle, you still get the influences of the mm-hmm. toxic environment. Uh, I just want to add on to what Soan said earlier. You do meet with an acupuncturist, <clears throat> and every day when you have your acupuncture treatment, you're actually meeting with your acupuncturist again. So mm-hmm. you definitely do have opportunities to speak to your acupuncturist about your issues that uh, mm-hmm. you might be able to carry forward after the retreat in the sense of uh, future treatments. So thank you. Okay, marvelous. And actually, <clears throat> the next question is for you, Dr. Dow. Funny enough, when you were bringing up the um, cycle of the 49 days, and you referred to it being similar to uh, fertility, that is a question. Um, is it all right for, I know Dr. Mao alluded to this earlier at the very beginning of the discussion, that it's great if one is uh, planning to get pregnant to do a detox first. Um, but we do have a question of whether it's okay to participate in the detox event if you're currently pregnant. Um, because I, I know that you know, there's different protocols that are going to take place throughout that. Yeah, we actually suggest that if you are pregnant right now, you know, it's uh, let us know. It's probably not as advisable when you're pregnant to do detox. But when you're going through the process of getting pregnant, uh, there is actually times where doing that treatment would be really helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, so it would be good for you to <clears throat> consult and talk to us about the time of your cycle, where that there are certain time of cycle that will be extremely helpful to do detoxification, especially before your ovulation. Mm-hmm. Uh, so these are kind of time that we highly suggest that. But we don't really recommend um, having a pregnant woman going through a detoxification right now. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is, uh, might we be opening more offices in the near future, such as in the Valley or the Thousand Oaks area? Um, I know we're well loved actually all across the country. So I'm sure that I'd like to know for other parts of the country too. Well, I, I don't know. Maybe I can ask everybody else, but we are so busy already. I, where know. We I don't know how we could open uh, another office. Um, I think it all really depends on the needs of uh, the patients and uh, the um, and also, um, but, but it's, uh, we are very happy right now. We have three offices. We have Pasadena and we have Newport Beach and we are trying to do our best in those regions. And maybe one day uh, we could open an office in different areas such as uh, uh, the Valley area or maybe South Bay. Um, per- we- per- perhaps I can uh, add some to that, um, you know, because um, the, you know, because, because we, Mm-hmm. Do do you all hear Dr. Mel? No, no Dr. one Mel, of the things you, that that's why. Uh, Dr. Mel, can you please repeat yeah. that? We couldn't hear you. you okay. Were, but you would like well, to. That so so yeah, so we want to extend our services to people all over the country and the world. So so one of the things we've set up is an ability for people to uh, get on a consultation, either via FaceTime or Skype or, you know, phone call. Um, and that's why we do these retreats as well, is that perhaps it's not convenient for people to come in on a regular basis, but they can come in when we do these retreats so they can have FaceTime, direct FaceTime with us and to go through the nutrition. But I would highly suggest people who, you know, maybe find the distance, you know, uh, to our office um, not as accessible to really tap technology. You know, we have technology. We have protocols that we can put you on uh, you know, wherever you are in the world. And we do have patients around the world that we do uh, on a regular basis, uh, consult with them, uh, ship them uh, herbal formulas, as well as advise them on nutritional protocols and, uh, and even working with their local acupuncturists and people that we, you know, we feel that they would competently 
uh, sort of carry out our protocol. So anyway, just keep that in mind. I, I think, you know, like uh, Dr. Zhao says, I mean, we, we, we don't have the bandwidth to physically do another office or two at this moment, but, you know, but we can, we can certainly uh, become available and accessible uh, using technology and using the various protocols that we have. And we also, uh, you know, invite all people that to, to really come to one of these retreats. You know, we have multiple retreats, not just detox retreat, but we have, for example, through uh, our annual meditation and Tai Chi retreat, you know, held in Temesco Canyon. Uh, so we have a number of different events throughout the year. Dr. Bell? <laughs> oh, I'm no, no, sorry. I was done. I was done. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we thought we lost you again. Uh, do you want to tell them when the retreat is coming up in Temesco? <laughs> Since that will be the next one after the detox. All right. So we were, we have an annual retreat uh, on February. It goes from February 8th to 10th this year. And uh, it'll be in Temesco. So people come and stay in these cabins and we, we do Tai Chi classes, Qigong classes, meditation programs. We have talks on spirituality. Uh, Dr. Dao and I uh, teach. We have other teachers in our spiritual tradition that come and teach. So it's a really wonderful community of like-minded people, people who are interested in um, service to the world as well as cultivating themselves so that they can be healthier both in their mind their body and their spirit. So it's a it's a wonderful uh, event that I, I highly encourage people come and join us. Okay, thank you. And for those of you who are viewing right now, we'll be uh, sending out details about that uh, in the near future. So we'll send you all the details for the retreat. So Anne, you wanted to jump in and say something? Yeah, I have one comment on um, the detox protocol for yes. someone who who try to get pregnant or who doing the IVF process? Because I've been seeing so many pregnant women who uh, who working through the IVF process. So usually IVF they use a lot of medication. So with the medication they easily experience some like a weight gain or water accumulation or a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. So we usually uh, emphasize uh, get uh, all the to cleanse their body from the toxin before implantation. So once they fi once um, finish IVF cycle uh, after egg retrieval, we recommend this detox protocol one time or even two two times, and then to get ready their uh, their body get ready for implantation. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Um, that actually leads into the next question that we have from an individual. So I'll leave it up to all of you who wants to answer. Uh, one of our um, Facebook. Uh, representatives wanted to know if someone can't make it to the detox weekend so i'm assuming this person might live in another part of the country do you have herb combinations that you sell online that can be used to detox from home i live in a different city that's the first question and then the next question is do women have to detox after their monthly cycle and if so when is the best time of the month to detox so i think you actually have three questions in there yeah, there's three questions. I'm going to answer the menstrual cycle. Okay. Um, the, this is Dr. Dow. The menstrual cycle is actually a terrific time to detox. If you think about it, you're bleeding, you're purging, you're cleaning mm -hmm. in some ways. And you begin to clean. And of course, it's cleaning through the endometrium. It's a shedding of your endometrium. But a lot of times, this is also a time where that actually all your systems, especially down below, also cleanse. Uh, mm -hmm. Frequently, you will find that your bowel movements are a little looser during that period of time. Mm -hmm. When you get your period, it's like before you get your period, you're a little bit more constipated because the progesterone level is a little elevated. So things feels a little bit more stuck. Okay. PMS time, for example. So a lot of time, once, just like literally one day before you start your period, a lot of time your body just kind of let go. Okay, so a lot of women, especially on the onset of the period, they realize they're also having a little more loose stool. Okay, so things are loosening up a little bit. Things just come out of your system. Uh, 
So you need to understand the period is in some ways your own body's own natural way of detoxification, cleaning out, starting a new cycle. So this is a very good period to detox. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would recommend that this is a time where you want to use, you know, hot soups, where you want to do something a little bit cleansing, but nourishing at the same time. Um, so some of that um, you can read in my uh, book called the Tao of uh, Fertility is in there. Uh, some of the recipes you can also see in the sitting room book. There's some sitting room book have to do with pregnancy, have to do with cleansing as well. Uh, so these are some of the things that you can look at. So that, I, I, at least I want to answer that. Thank you so much. And I think it's very insightful as a woman because nobody gives us a manual for these things. We don't know what's going on with our bodies and they don't address that too often in Western medicine. So, you know, you don't know why are you suddenly, why are your bowels one way versus another way? It's hard to talk about poop, but it's true. Like all of us women go through it, but we don't understand why. And yet here it is just a very natural part of our being versus feeling like something's wrong with us. So I think it's really nice when we can have an understanding of why our bodies are functioning a particular way at a particular time of the month as well. So I, this is Dr. Mao. I wanted to address the other question about whether there's sure. an in-home protocol you can do. Yes, yes. If you're a patient at Dow Wellness, one of the things we would do is uh, put you on the specific diet and nutritional protocol. Uh, we send you the specific herbs for cleansing and detox, and we explain to you the protocols. You can do some of it at home. Maybe there's an infrared sauna you can access near you. Maybe there is, you know, you can go in for some body work done locally. And so, yes, there's a, there's, um, there's a protocol that we can provide for you, uh, if, you know, as, if you're a patient of Dow Wellness, because, again, this requires uh, some supervision and instruction. Uh, but you can certainly do uh, the detox at home and get, um, you know, uh, I would say good, good, good deal of the benefit that uh, that you would get. Uh, what you don't get, of course, is unfortunately you don't get the group interactions. You don't get the kind of the um, emotional detoxification, the lectures, and so forth. But you know, that's also information we can um, send you and set you up as well. Okay, and uh, Dr. Mao, if somebody is doing detox at ho- or in home, um, who do they contact to be able to coordinate this? Well, they, they just uh, all they have to do is just make an appointment um, uh, through our, you know, any of our offices, whether it's you know Newport, Pasadena, Santa Monica office, and they'll set up a uh, a Skype or a FaceTime consultation so we can go over that with you on you know, during the session and give you support afterwards and mail you uh, the, all the kind of the kit, you know, so everything you need to make it happen for you at home. Okay, thank you. Um, Okay, next question, and this is going to be our last question of the night. Uh, One of our individuals would like to know, is it advised to do detox if you get frequent headaches? Who would like to answer that? I can address that. Um, maybe <laughs> is, is, is the short answer. But uh, the long way of addressing it is that there's many reasons why you could be getting a headache. And so um, if it's an extremely bad headache and it feels like someone took a two by four and hit you across the head, that could actually be pretty severe and serious. And maybe you need to be going to your doctor to get some imaging done. Um, if it's something that's more mild and it's it's really bothersome. Yeah, maybe. I mean, if it's kind of in the background, um, maybe detoxification is really what you need. Um, but this is the importance of meeting with us individually, um, either via Skype in, in the office, wherever it is, um, just so we can really assess what else is going on with you. Um, headache is a little too general, and it can be anything from a benign um, tension type thing or something very serious where um, – you need some serious attention. Okay. Hey, you know, I, I, I want to say that that's an excellent uh, answer to the question, Matthew. I, when, I, when I had my mercury poisoning, I actually had this dull headache on a regular basis, which I just checked it off as, you know, tension. But um, after my, my, my intense uh, detoxification, I got rid of my mercury, my headache went away. And I, you know, used to get a little dizzy when I stood up too quickly. 
Um, and that all went away. And uh, the best part of it is that my, my memory came back and I remembered uh, everything my wife tells me to do. So that was a big bonus. <laughs> that is definitely a bonus. <laughs> So also, let me add in one comment. So a headache can be from deficiency and excess. Deficiency means more like a weak constitution, and excess means more like a severe and then a constant pain. So if you have a headache, like um, a very strong headache for like a um, headache, in that case, this detox protocol is really helpful because it's going to improve your circulation, so can reduce your blood, blood pressure too. Also for um, the little comments uh, in terms of the woman's health. So yeah. we see the, our, our body through the a condition through the actually bleeding, menstruation. So if you see a lot of blood clots with a lot of like a body cramps, in, especially in pelvic area or low back area, so mm -hmm. that means you, sh you really need it. And then blood clot means your body circulation in uterus area is not really, um, it is not proper proper way so your blood stay inside your uterus for a long period of time so easily contact to the oxygen that is the reason why you see a lot of clots so we need to improve the circulation in your uterus and pelvic area so detox is um, the best way to get rid of any possible blockage there so once we have better circulation you're gonna have less pain and then um, less clots and then also free flow of your circulation, uh, you're your bleeding too during the menstruation period. Got it, thank you so much. I think that's very relevant as well. So thank you for these insights. Um, all right, well, we have now run to almost 6.30, but I think it was very well worthwhile. I'm so appreciative to all of you for staying on extra long tonight. Um, for those that are interested in signing up for the detox retreat, as Dr. Mao mentioned, you can contact, whether you're doing it in person or doing it in home, uh, you can contact the Dow Wellness Clinics, any of the three clinics, and they will help you to get signed up. If you are a new viewer and don't know how to contact our clinics, then uh, you're welcome to contact me at marketing and uh, marketing at infinity.com and I will help you get in touch with the clinics. Um, but this is upcoming, so you want to do it as soon as possible uh, for registration. Um, a couple of other things that I just want to touch on before we sign off and say goodbye with everyone. Um, first of all, this Thursday, we have Women's Wellness with Dr. Dow. And funny enough, so Anne just kind of gave us an introduction to part of this because we are going to be talking about preparing the uterus for fertility. Um, and this is going to be a deep dive into how to best prepare your body as a woman for the process of um, fertility and conception um, and all of the steps that you can take to give yourself the best support possible. So I'll let Dr. Dow touch on that in a moment if he wants to share more on this before Thursday. Um, but that will take place at 515 on our same um, Dow Wellness video channel and also here on Zoom. Uh, and we will send out an email reminder to let you know how to connect through Zoom if you need to do so. Um, also, uh, we have Dr. Mao who is going to be um, doing an upcoming episode of the Home and Family TV show. So uh, we will be sending you an update on the date of that appearance as soon as we receive it. So keep your eyes open for that. And then we also have uh, next week, Dr. Dow with our telestudy episode. Um, and we will be sending you a reminder of that as well so that you know the passage in the book that will be covered. Um, and that is done through a, a private Zoom meeting. So you'll get all the details to be able to participate in that too. Um, and we just have a jam packed month for you all. So 2019, here we go. We are jumping in with both feet and ready to support you in every area of your life. Um, so thank you again for attending tonight. I'm going to let each of um, our participants uh, give their goodbyes to you and then we'll sign off for the night. So Suan, perhaps if you'd like to start, any last thoughts that you'd like to share with everyone, especially since you will be facilitating this event? <laughs> I'm so excited uh, to see more participants and then if you have any questions, just feel free to let us know. So even though we have a special um, 
designed protocol for detox detoxification, but we can also customize for your uh, medical condition too. So just feel comfortable, let us know. And then um, this is the best way to detox your body, especially in January as a New Year's resolution. So let's get started first and then um, continue. Continue uh, on detox, detox your body. So 2019 gonna be, you guys gonna be healthier and happier and then yeah, happy, happy year. <laughs> we all want health and happiness. <laughs> hey, thank you, Suan. Matthew, do you have any last thoughts for us? Um, no, I just uh, strongly encourage you all to, if you're up in the Santa Monica area, can make it up to the Santa Monica area, go ahead and check this out. Um, I've had the pleasure of working under Sean on a couple occasions um, on these things. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, people seem to have a great time. And, you know, the, the energy is really um, electric. It's really great. Well, mellow electric, I'll say. Um, and also, uh, I do want to say for any of you that are near the Pasadena or um, Newport Beach offices, we want to hear from you. If you can't make it up there and you want to see us do something like this, please give us a call. Let us know. Email us. Um, or if you're one of our patients, just come in and, and tell us. Um, so thanks and have a great new year. Thank you, Matthew. Dr. Tao? Yes, I want to thank everyone that participate in this uh, Zoom session, this live uh, Facebook live session. Um, your health is very important to us. And of course, detoxification, or even though it starts in the physical level, it's really the whole being, spiritually, emotionally. We are trying to help everyone here to become healthier. So it's an opportunity. It's also a privilege to be a partner in your health, um, in helping you to become healthier this year. So I look forward to spending a great time with all of you who participate in the retreat. And also that uh, uh, wish every one of you um, a very healthy 2019. Thank you so much. And Dr. Mel? Oh, Dr. Mao might have had to sign off already. Yes, I believe so. All right. Well, we want to thank you so much again for joining us tonight. And uh, certainly for those of you that would like to join Dr. Dow and I on Thursday, you will be very welcome into our circle. Uh, so with that, have a beautiful evening, everyone. And we are so appreciative to you for your continual support. Um, we have a program every single month for you in 2019. So please stay tuned for updates. And we truly hope that you are enjoying these wellness education events. Take care and good night. Thank you. Bye.